In this lesson, we'll discuss using the cut line pattern option. This is where the cut line is perforated, where the blade is lifted incrementally along the cut line. This is a specialized type of perforation designed so that when the blade is lifted, it doesn't have to be completely lifted out of the material, but only lifted halfway. This leaves notches or tags so that the cutter can cut completely through the backing without the cut piece falling out. This type of cutting is often used with a print and cut workflow to create pop-out decals. In this lesson, we will show how the blade can be set up correctly for this type of operation, the best condition settings to be used for the best results, and then how to assign those conditions using Cutting Master 3. The cut line patterns of the FC8600 has seven different patterns to choose from, including a user-defined pattern. In this lesson, we'll set up the user-defined pattern because it is one that our technicians have tested thoroughly and found to work the best with most materials, including laminated materials. Keep in mind that you may also find that using one of the seven predefined line patterns works best for your application, but try it this way first. In this demonstration, we'll use this graphic you see here on the screen. You'll notice two outside cut lines in different colors, each being assigned to a different layer. There are three layers that are labeled Print, Kiss Cut, and Cut Through. The Print layer has all the objects that are to be printed. Kiss Cut is the normal cut, and Cut Through is the layer that contains the cut line that will cut through the backing. We'll assign the appropriate conditions to both cut layers. The blade tool setup is a little different than normal. To start, take the blade and extend it out to where the exposed blade is visually about the same thickness as the material you want to cut through, including the backing. To test the length of the extension, place the material you are using for your job on a flat surface, such as a table. Take the corner of the media and fold it into a three-fold formation. Take the blade holder in hand, and making sure the blade holder is in an upright position, firmly slice the top layer of the three-fold formation. The goal here is to make sure the blade slices completely through the media, backing, and then some, to the point of where it scores the media on the second layer. If it doesn't score the second layer, or the first layer cannot be separated, then extend the blade a quarter of a turn and repeat the test. If you can, use a scrap piece of material for testing. The basic workflow for print and cut using the perforated cut line pattern option is to first determine which two conditions will be used for this process. In this lesson, we'll be using condition 1 and 8. Condition 1 will be used for the kiss cut layer for the normal cut line, and condition 8 will be used for cutting completely through the backing or carrier sheet. This is the condition that will have a cut line pattern assigned to it. To set up the kiss cut operation, start by setting up condition 1. First, we have to make sure the cutting tool is in the tool carrier 1 position. Recall that this is the back slot of the tool carrier. You'll know that it's in the correct tool carrier because the tool will be positioned over the Teflon mat. Next, we'll set up the two conditions by pressing the condition button. Pressing the 1 key to change the condition number, and then pressing the arrow key to switch to condition 1, and pressing enter. We'll configure condition 1 by first configuring the blade type to CB09U. If you plan to use a different blade, then select another choice. We'll start with the force from its normal setting. Recall that for normal vinyl, the force is usually set to 14. Keep in mind that these settings are based on a new blade. If you have an older or dull blade, your values will be higher. Also, the value may be higher if you are using media that is laminated. Finally, write down this kiss cut value since the cut through force value will be based on this. Press enter to accept the value. Next, we can set the speed to about 30.
If you'd like, press the left arrow to perform a test cut to ensure the cut depth is correct, then readjust the settings if need be. Next, we'll move the blade tool from the back slot to the front slot of the tool carrier, which is tool carrier position 3. Once again, you'll know it's in the right slot because the tool will be right over the front channel. Next, press the 1 key once again to change the condition to condition 8. The up or down arrow keys can be used to switch the conditions. Pressing Enter will accept the settings. We'll set the tool to CB09U. As mentioned earlier, the cut through force should be set to the kiss cut force plus 10. In this case, the kiss cut force was set to 14, so we'll set the cut through force to about 24. We'll set the speed to 30. Keep in mind that these settings are a starting point based upon testing results we performed at GraphTech. You may find that you might need to adjust these settings according to your material. The next step is important. Pressing the down arrow key will allow us to access the second page of settings for condition 8. And then pressing the 2 key will access the cut line pattern settings. This menu will appear. If we press the 2 key for type, this window will display. The up or down arrow keys can be used to choose a predefined line pattern, or in this case, we'll choose user. This will allow us to use our own cut pattern. In this menu, the first value cut is the distance the blade cuts through the material prior to lifting the blade. Let's set this to, but no higher than, 1.5. Up is the distance the blade is cutting in the up position. We'll set this value to 0 0.035. Up mode determines the force that is applied when the cut tool is in the up position. This is good to remember because when the value is set at up, the blade will lift completely out of the material. We can set this value to about 2 by pressing the left arrow key and then changing the value. What is convenient is that when the up mode is set to a value other than up, it will actually speed up the overall throughput of the cutting. Pressing the left arrow key will exit, and pressing enter will accept the values. The next step is an important one. We need to assign condition 8 to tool 3. Recall that the back slot is tool 1, and the front slot is tool 3. We'll press the 3 key for Assign Tool. The screen will display two rows. The top row is the condition number, and the bottom row is the tool number assigned to each condition. The setting is at condition 8. We can press the 3 key, and this will assign condition 8 to tool 3, the front slot of the tool holder. The reason this is an important step is if this is not done, then the cut through cut line will be off or shifted. We can press enter to accept the value. At this point, a simple cut test should be performed, but it is recommended to draw a one inch circle in your software instead of using the standard test patterns. Using a larger shape to test the cut settings, in this case a circle, will provide a better idea of how the cut settings will work. If the result is not quite what you want, adjust the settings in increments of one or two. Going back to the software, we can now send the job to Cutting Master 3. We'll click on Configure Cut Job. Under Apply Conditions, we'll click on the By Layer option since for this job we have separated the items by layers. Click on the check mark next to the print layer since we won't be printing. This will remove everything except the two cut lines. We'll first click on the condition setting for the kiss cut layer and select condition 1. Then set the condition for the cut through layer to condition 8. The last step for the software is to place a pause between the kiss cut layer and the cut through layer. This is done by right clicking between the layers and then selecting add pause. 
It will cut the kiss cut layer first, so the blade holder will have to be switched to the back slot or tool 1. Now load the graphic if you haven't already done so. And send the job. The cutter will start to find the registration marks. And cut the kiss cut layer. Once it is finished cutting the kiss cut layer, it will then stop. We can now move the blade holder, which is tool 1, from the back slot and place it in the front slot or tool position 3. And then click resume cutting in the software. The results will be a pop-out decal that will have a cut line providing pop-out decals for your customers.